Welcome back to Maximum Attack Rallying and to part two of our lovely little discussion with uh, Henry Catchpole. If you haven't watched part one, do make sure you jump over to the channel where you will find it. I'll also add a link in the description to it and it'll be part of the playlist, so you should be able to find it fairly easily. Um, I thought it would be better to do it as a two-part because we waffled a lot, as rally people often do, so you have lots to look forward to in this second part. We kind of pick up where we left off in terms of talking about the WRC and then get into some other things so do keep watching I hope you enjoy it so let's get right back to Mr Catchpot so I want to talk about the WRC specifically uh, mm -hmm. and this year because uh, I think we're at an interesting point for the WRC in terms of its future but we'll come to that I just want to get your take on kind of where we're at in terms of the championship you know I think is it is it turning out as you expected? I mean, have you got a tip for the winner this year? Who do you? We've just heard that OGA is probably going to do the last four rallies. He's twenty-seven points as we record this off the off of Newville. Can he do it? Can he win? Do you think he can over overhaul Newville? Yes, he can. Yeah, I mean, it, it's well, that's, um, that's matter of fact, isn't it? Straight in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he is, um, you know, as a. As a, as a fan, and I don't mean this in any sort of, you know, this kind of, person, he's he's not my, the person I almost want to win the championship, but he, he he's so good. And I, I think he's, um, we've got the time out rallies, so he's that far, now he's at the right point to be that far up the order. Um, and I'd like to see Thierry, I'd, I'd love to see Elvin want it to be honest you know as a biased person it's um i've known album for a long time and I, it, would, it would be fantastic to see him win the championship i was absolutely gutted to see what happened in in finland where do you, um, where do you think it's gone it wrong was, where do you think it's gone wrong for album this year because what's 2020 and 2021 he finished second in the championship and to me he genuinely looked like he was he was there you know he was competing against the yeah. very best um yeah. obviously you know last year was not 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 great but you know and this year started okay but where, where do you think it's going going wrong for it i think it's been it's obviously it's been such a weird year this year that it's actually quite hard to tell i think where people have either tripped up or or not sometimes because because of the way the points system going it, it's and I've, I've yet to kind of um have frankly enough time to to delve into where everyone would be sitting where it on the old point system and of course that's all a bit of a moot point anyway because people would have driven differently were at the yeah, old yeah, point yeah. system run this one etc 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 so um it it just feels like a very weird season overall i think um and it feels like um it's it's just been a, so strange having you know elvin and thierry effectively put themselves out there as the front runners but then everything being taken over by essentially calais and um sebastian coming in dropping into these rallies and it, just being able to amass these points kind of road position a lot of the time let's face it um and it's it just makes me feel slightly uncomfortable i think this season because it doesn't feel like a a true reflection of the drivers in it somehow um i kind of hope i hope thierry wins it um of the two front runners now because it would feel like the sort of the just thing to to happen in a yeah, way yeah i think I, I i would go with that i think he has i think perhaps for me at least one of the differences between him and uh, and elvin is that Thierry has he's really kind of got his head around the point system and how to take advantage of it and and for me I think his big strength is that he's driving to kind of maximize his points total for the weekend whereas it feels to me that the Elfin and Toyota generally are kind of still approaching it in the old way somehow and they've not quite got their head around the fact that winning the rally isn't actually everything anymore you know you need to yeah rightly or wrongly i mean I, I i don't like the system at all i think it's it's ridiculous but it, it seems to me that they haven't quite figured it out yet that that 
they need to change the way that they, they approach things. And it's this, again, this slightly, it's sort of felt like it's, it's sort of been hampering Elven from the outset with having these you know, absolute mega stars coming in as guest drivers, not guest drivers, but you know, second uh, drivers further down the field. And it, and Toyota having this system, of, which I don't get, and you kind of respect in some ways of everyone for themselves, no team orders, but that also feels just slightly wrong somehow it's, um, yeah, in this it's, situation, it's, particularly when you've got Hyundai, um, you know, in cycling, you have the cycling of Duvi Tess, and it sort of feels the same here, where you've got Hyundai would absolutely throw everything to make it um, happen if they if they could, and Toyota not. Yeah, I think it's it's quite noble somehow, isn't it, uh, Toyota's approach? But I mean, no one remembers noble if you don't win the championship today. You know, I think it's it's <laughs> no the yeah. ruthlessness of Hyundai and, and single mindedness there. They're doing what they have to do, aren't they? And I think that's kind of been their, talking, their approach. Talking of noble and not winning championships, that was obviously the you know probably Elvin's best um, hope was in uh, that Monza rally where he went off the road and <laughs> then scrambled back up the bank and slowed Ogier down. And of course, if he hadn't done that or couldn't have done that, the likelihood of you know Ogier admitted he would probably have gone off at exactly the same place, and mm. Elvin would have won the championship. So. Um, yeah, I think that is sort of it, yeah. it was a it was his career in in a you know sort of microcosm somehow, wasn't it? It showed yeah. how professional he is, how you know what a team player he is, what a good guy yeah. he is. He he wanted to do the right thing, yeah. and and I mean I think any of the drivers would have done the same, wouldn't they? But I think absolutely, yes. He um he he just he showed why he's so likable in some respects, but also I don't know it was it was sort of tragic at the same time was this summer <laughs> <laughs> um so oh, let's go on let's go on to the difficult i know you've touched on this because you said about rally two i've actually read just not long before we started recording this i don't know if you've seen it but there is a rumor now that red bull are thinking of selling the promotional rights to the wrc uh, obviously we've only got a couple of years left of, of rally one mm -hmm. i think for me it feels like the wrc is kind of off you know, we're we're at a crossroads about the, the kind of future of the sport in terms of its success and 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 kind of becoming relevant or remaining relevant. Um, in turn, let's let's do technical first. You've said that you believe that Rally Two is the future. Do you think that's still? I I I was with you, but I'm getting a bit concerned. I and I have said that they're counting their Rally Two car now from next year. And I think Rally 2 is probably the best set of technical re regulations, certainly this century, perhaps ever. But do you think it's getting to the point with the way the industry is going in terms of small hatchbacks disappearing? Do you think we're getting to the point where it might have run its course and it's not going to give us the long-term stability? Uh, there is the, obviously there is the danger of that. I think, I think it would need, so I, I think, it would need invigorating um, with something like e-fuels. That would be my big thing that I think it, and it's kind of what I think rallying should have adopted, to be honest, before the hybrid rally one era. I, I always thought that actually going, they kind of missed the boat. Um, EV, pure EV wasn't going to happen, obviously. Mm. Um, despite Hayden Pan's best efforts. Um, and the hybrid felt like it was a, just a bit behind the times, to be honest. And I felt that Rally really could have showcased um, e-fuels, uh, fuel. so this is kind of the stuff that Porsche's investing yeah, heavily. Yeah. I mean, they, they do in, use sustainable the, fuel, don't they? they I, I'm not sure. I'm they not do. Sure. But no, no one, they don't seem to talk about it enough, but well, exactly, and I think this is it. I think there's a there's a we've seen sort of um, you know the good re revival running on you know sustainable uh, fuels, and this is um, I I think there could have been a really good message built around that as a, a sort of a demonstration of this area 
of of the sort of the future of, of of motoring and one of the things that we're looking at because i think a lot of people now realize that um evs and are going to be part of the solution in the wider motoring world um they will almost certainly not be the whole solution uh to it and well i'm now going to get loads of angry we're now going to get angry comments <laughs> oh probably yeah. <laughs> but, um uh, yeah which way you go on it but i think you know this is we're, we're looking at a, a a wider thing sort of all across the whole motor industry and i think that's what most manufacturers are now now saying it's it's um uh, certainly in the near future so the next next decade and i think sustainable fuels look more and more like they are going to be playing a big part in it. and i think rallying could have really championed those and it would have given the manufacturers a message to get behind um and it would obviously have fitted in i think pretty seamlessly with uh, rally two cars uh, so yeah that's my do you think um so how do you feel about rally one do you think it's been successful or no I, I, sorry I'm, I'm gonna change my question i mean how because we, we've been through we're, we're one and a half regulation cycles so 2017 to 21 mm -hmm. do you think that was a good move because i have very mixed feelings about it i think it did create some extra press and, and obviously the cars i liked the cars in many ways but at the same time a big part of me is like they were too expensive didn't attract manufacturers do you how did you feel about that as an as an era 2017 to 21 did you think it was overall good or bad or i think it was overall good i think it was really exciting from a, from a pure rally fan perspective the cars looked amazing they were very quick um and we had some just some really good stories uh in there when you think back to the you know oj M sport stories and stuff like that and it, and it um and then elvin going across to toyota and his you know rise there it it all i think as an era from rally fan i i really really enjoyed it do you think we i think my maybe my problem with it with it is that i i feel like did well, the question i would maybe ask is did we set ourselves up to fail by having these cars that were seven hundred and fifty thousand euros or whatever they were uh where did we go after that and i think maybe rally yeah. one and part of the problem with rally one is like it was like it was the next step but the next step was all you know going from those 17 spec cars to rally two car would have been very difficult wouldn't it in the same way that perhaps going from a rally one car to a rally two car could be seen as quite difficult so yeah uh do you think i think it's sort of all this sort of a cyclical, cyclical thing of um we're in a sort of um obviously very different for different reasons but the you know end of group b era now got dropping down to group a which at the time obviously must have felt like a huge backward step mm, um, yeah, yeah. we all know the cars were you know up to up to speed pretty quickly in terms of you know the technology um coming along but it's it's a hard sell isn't it um when you do drop down but i think if you can um and ironically didn't i group a didn't have the competition in there either but if you could drop down knowing you've got you know many more manufacturers and drivers and stuff in there then you just um yeah you can create the stories around around that yeah i think we've i, I suppose we're fortunate compared to where we were in 87 like you say i mean the field in 87 was not great was it lancia happened to have the right kind of car so obviously walked away with it and then everyone else was left scrabbling a little bit whereas now if we did go to rally two you've got the fiesta the uh skoda the citroen uh the toyota you've got a a mix of of relatively you know evenly matched cars yeah. um I, th I think the other thing from a technical perspective as well is it's, it's uh um again looking at it from a marketing or pr perspective um why not go down the route of you know the, obviously we know the cars are pretty heavy with the hybrid stuff mm. in them if, if you're selling it as a a next jump then focus on the the lighter weight which again is something else lots of people in the wider industry have been 
um, saying we need to look at making cars lighter um, and this is appealing and you look at you know, Alpine A110 or whatever like that sort of you know, this is what enthusiasts want is lighter cars so right we're focus on that so that's where they're getting their speed from we've taken the hybrid out they haven't got as much power but they're lighter so it's kind of yeah you know, that's these sorts of things i think can be um woven in to change the, the message and make it um better um, and seem more palatable and like we're not necessarily just losing by going down from uh, the current rally one cars do you think I think it's interesting because there, ha there was obviously talk of getting rid of the hybrid system, wasn't there, which the manufacturers seem to push back against. Um, do you think that, oh, I know Toyota have been quite pra pragmatic and said that they would do anything and go with, with either, either rule set, but do you think there's a bit of an issue there between what the manufacturers want and what is, is best in terms of, you know, I think the, the harsh reality is that there's not a huge amount of interest in WRC or enough interest in WRC um, so that we maybe need to do, you know, something drastic like going to Rally 2 where you've got four or five different cars would is actually what it needs. It would reduce costs. So do you think we're pandering too much to the manufacturers who are saying, no, we need to keep hybrid or keep this or keep that? Do you think we need to just say, well, actually, no, this is in the best interests and you kind of need to suck it up? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I can, I mean, this whole, this year, that just seemed ridiculously rushed and knee jerk, and uh, I could never see it happening. And I totally get the manufacturers sort of just going. I mean, they, they've they've allocated budgets and marketing spends and all the sort of campaigns and everything around all these sort of things so far in advance that to suddenly start you know whipping carpets out from under feet um, is just. I can totally see why people were pushing back on that, but the. Obviously, the other advantage of dropping down to Rally 2 is that you um, spread the influence that manufacturers actually have on the championship as well in terms of if you've got um, you know, five, six manufacturers maybe in there, then you're not looking at effectively kind of two stakeholders uh, that we've currently got in Rally mm -hmm. 1 um, sort of holding everyone else over a, over a barrel because if Hyundai says, right, we're off, then everyone goes no, 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 no what can we do to make this happen but if it's rally two and hyundai goes off well you've still got other manufacturers that are in there and who probably sort of going right a bit less competition for us sort of thing um so yeah how do you uh how do you read the hyundai situation right now it's interesting it's just funny that you mentioned them being talking about being you know them threatening to leave and i think they've they've committed to next year haven't they but not officially beyond that they semi-committed i think to the end to the end of 26 and there's talk of obviously this world endurance uh, championship program do you i mean they've been in a long time and they've been in 10 years now do you think how do you read it do you think they're going to go do you think this is they're coming to the end of it potentially it could hinge on what happens this year if Thierry wins it and they've got a driver's title to shout about and get enthused about uh i can see that actually having quite a big sway on whether they stay or not um other than that i don't know it's it, it it so many of these things can hinge on things so far and away and above rallying um in boardrooms on the other side of the world that i yeah i, I sort of can't really offer um, I wish I could offer more insight, but it's, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think it's sort of beyond my ken as well. Do you think, um, I mean, how important do you think uh, motorsport is now as a marketing tool? I suppose like, mm, there's two elements, isn't it? How do you, important do you think it, it, it is as a tool for marketing a product relative to a tool for marketing a brand? Because, I mean, you could say that Formula One, for example, it's not marketing a product in a way, is it? Because the cars are obviously so far removed from anything on the road. I know there's a, they talk about a bit of technology transfer in terms of engines and things, but you know, how important do you think motorsport can? How important a role do you think motorsport can play now with the kind of shift we're having with our relationship with the car and how people view the car? And do you, do you think it's still that important anymore? Do you think it matters, or do you think the average person in the street? 
doesn't doesn't bother them anymore they're more interested in connectivity or you know um, things other than driving i think it i think it does still matter um and i think it it i can see there's there's been a lot said about sort of particularly younger generation not being into cars in the same way but then you look at i mean you look at lamar um and for, for right or wrong sort of the, they seem to have they've hit a, a sweet spot with the the rules there and mm. i don't know a lot of people don't like balance of performance and i absolutely get that but let's face it they've got a huge number of manufacturers in there it's i was at le mans this year for the first time in a, in a long time and just seeing those images on the television of all those um hybrid hypercars leading the pack down that sort of that the view down the, the Malsan Strait through the chicanes. And we're so used to seeing, you know, half a dozen cards really making up and then all the GTs behind. And suddenly you just had all these prototypes there. And it's so ex you know exciting. And it showed in the, the number of people that went went across there and watched this year. And Formula One is obviously still massively um impactful. The drive to survive has helped Mm, yeah, a lot yeah. with that um and i think people are finding new ways to help get the most out of the sort of the marketing benefit of these things sort of perhaps away from you know the traditional comp competitive aspect of it in it in some respects but i i think motorsport's still got a, a huge role to play for manufacturers they certainly don't seem to be shying away from it and and rallying has you know i, th I think to your point about the whole um, brand versus product, that's where rallying still obviously has the potential to to, to market the, the product um, as well as you know, much more than the, um, the the brand almost. So, um, what do you think? Just just, uh, just jumping back to, to to WEC for a second. What what do you think they've done right with uh, sports car racing? Why do you think we've suddenly got Peugeot going back and a uh, Cadillac back, aren't they? You know, have gone into a one point. What do you think? Is well, I think, I, I think, sort of what you said before about sort of you know the the danger of um, going back to a, a slower formula in terms of the uh, rally two. What the what they've done very well is they they've gone back a lot because these cars are. You know, I spoke to Nick Tandy about this sort of you know comparing driving the old LMP one cars, um, and can you hear children in the background? By no, no, you good. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, uh, the going back to from the I spoke to Nick Tandy about this and the going from the old LMP1 cars, um, which were phenomenally fast. Um, really, sort of, we saw that in the 919 Evo, um, which was mm, yeah, a bit yeah. but um, setting ridiculous lap times and stuff like that. To the the now hybrid cars, he said they feel so slow compared to them, but equally you look at them they're spectacular the drive they can kind of be overdriven they're much cheaper for the manufacturers um to do to build and get involved with does anybody care that they're slower apart from the drivers that <laughs> used to yeah. drive in the old ones no but and somehow WEC and world well, and they, they've navigated that really well relaunching this and and nobody's talking about the fact that these cars are, are slower they don't care because they look as fast as the previous ones um so that's that's the challenge i suppose for rallying is to kind of um you know make something that's more affordable probably therefore slower um which those two messages are not overriding for the watching public but they get across to the the mm. manufacturers who then come in and, and say yeah we'll have a bit of that because suddenly we can you know you've got to spend far less budget on on doing this and um we're on a big global stage so yeah 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 okay let's stop talking about that i want to get into the really important stuff <laughs> the escort, ah. the escort. <laughs> i think you might be the only motoring journalist who owns a rally car that i know of unless you know someone else who's, who's hiding it which is great. I'm, 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 I'm impressed. So uh, how is it? Because uh, for anyone who's not familiar, you've got a Mark II uh, RS2000, uh, which you've had for quite a long time now. You've done a couple of rallies in it, and it's been a way having some 
work done. So how's it going? Well, it's, um, uh, yeah, so the engine and the rest of the car are in two different places and have been Good. for some time. Um, so, uh, and but all the parts are there for the engine. So I'm really just kind of waiting for my friend to kind of build it basically um and we've got this plan for it because the the last rally i did with gethin jones we kind of got halfway through the first stage and realized that all was not well and um the engine was not a happy bunny um and so yeah new engine was required new pinto um went in and then uh, i've got uh, a friend who um works at motec and he came up with a great idea of um we we're going to put uh, motorbike throttle bodies on it, okay, which yeah. a lot of people are going to sort of go through. Oh my word, he's gone! Um, but because this is a car that I, I'd like to be able to take out on the road occasionally as well, and sort of, you know, I don't live a million miles away from Bista, so the idea of taking it over to Bista Heritage or something like that yeah, would yeah. be quite nice. And just having something that is a little more. Um, yeah sort of a little less capricious maybe in terms of um maintenance and stuff like that. and i just thought it'd be quite fun um to do it so there's all sorts of fun things we can do with that so that's the kind of plan with it still keep it very much um as a, a sort of club and spec uh car and yeah that's kind of what needs to happen with it so i think all the bits are in place it just needs to happen and i'm yeah i'm i'm so lucky in the job that I do, that I get to drive cars an awful lot of the time and wonderful cars and sometimes even rally cars. So it scratches the itch, um, not from a competitive point of view, but uh, it, it sort of takes the emphasis away from um, getting the escort done, which is um, my fault really, but uh, life sometimes gets in the way. So yeah, it so, will get so, done. So um, what made you pick an escort out of interest because obviously you've driven lots of rally cars since mm -hmm. before you you'd bought that one i'm not suggesting that you would have gone out and bought a world rally car but um obviously you started com driving competitively in a 205 and then a, a swift so what uh what made you go down the escort path um i i like the fundamental balance of rear wheel drive over front wheel drive um there's it is i think we can use the word it is iconic in terms of rallying i, I think so yeah when i did the swift sport cup i suppose there was a you know that tiny part of me that that wonders sort of god oh, this goes well and kind of like you know could i start climbing up some sort of rallying ladder and doing bigger and better th and i quickly disabused myself of that idea on all sorts of um levels so at which point it's a case of right what would i what do i want to get out of running what do i love about it and i love the um the feeling of driving the car on a stage and the unique qualities that uh, rally stages um offer up and i want something that's going to be fun to drive and, and the, the escort is absolutely that i drove um i drove dkp 191t um before it um, long before it went back to Pro Drive to be um, done, which is obviously the Rothmans. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. Another, an, another car I missed off the car, list. So, uh, <laughs> um, and that sort of sealed the deal, kind of. I think once you've felt the way an escort oversteers and how happily it oversteers and sits into oversteer, it's there's there is nothing quite like it. Um, and even my very low spec escort. Um, has all those qualities um in it in the, in the sort of the, the general feel of it so i thought yeah that's that's the car for for me it's a, a lovely thing to to have to be proud of to own and um, dynamically it just it, it absolutely ticks all the boxes for me did you because you drove one of the mst cars didn't you a while ago mm. did that did you did you get out of that and did you because i know i would have done this i would have got out of that and then immediately opened their catalogue and started thinking, yeah, well, I could just... Did oh, it, yeah, yeah. Did it, did it make you I, think I'm not sure I even got out doing. of the car. I think I just took them off the passenger <laughs> seat and sat there just going through, right, I need that. And then instead of, yeah, I, I was literally, and I was looking at all the things, not from a, even like a daydream, so I was like, well, they do a carbon bonnet here. So, and then a carbon 
boots are like they those would be quite sort of relative yeah i could probably afford that and that would make it lighter kind of but that that would be a really big gain for sort of the no come on henry you've just got to get the engine into the car first i mean like let's not say yes i absolutely did that yeah that see that is that is why i bought a car in 2012 and it was 2019 before i competed in it because unlike you yeah. i didn't have any restraint and i thought well i'll just and then just and then and then it was a body shell and yeah, yeah. that's that's project cars though isn't it um yeah so yeah just before we wrap it up, I've shamelessly stolen this idea from my friend uh, Bob, who also does some interviews here and there. I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions uh, about a few different things. Okay. So, uh, of all the rally cars you've driven, I think you answered me. I think you said this is the Impreza. You, which was the one you enjoyed the most? Impreza 97? Is that right? Yes, I think that would be the one. Yeah, that, the, I love all of them. I, and that sounds really like cool, that is, but I, I that is a lovely love lovely lo lovely fence that you're on i know but but yes if i had to pick one let's yeah we'll go with okay this this, this might be slightly different because this might not be a car that you've driven what is your favorite rally car of all oh um probably um i think I'd have to say the Escort, really, just because okay. I, I think that it's um, um, it's Escort or yeah, I think it is the something something about it that um, that's why I own it and and I yeah dynamic I think I I love it. It's either that or um, uh, Tarmac nine eleven, um, which have I, you, I think have you driven a classic nine eleven rally car? Obviously, you drive, uh, RG, uh, you drive Richard Tuttle's RGT car, but yeah, and I've driven one of the Tuttle Safari cars. Oh, okay, um, as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, I've driven, driven that. Uh, favorite driver, uh, Harry Vatterman. Favorite um, rally, um, I would say, um. Probably Finland. Um, I think that's the one I would I would love to go and do. Just the I yeah I, I there's something about it. Um, the jumps of on employer and the sort of that that I that's the one that I, I'd love to know what that feels like doing those jumps. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll say rally Finland. Good uh, favorite era. Oh, um, that's, a, that's a difficult one because there's so many good ones. I <laughs> yeah, I I think. Um, oh wow, yeah. Um, I think probably probably Group B. Okay, and that's and that's sort of said from a probably just because of all the um i'm not saying it was the best era and weirdly it's sort of and it feels like a very cliched thing to say but i don't think it comes from that um that angle i think it's just from the number of the number of stories and the it was sort of a terrible era as well but from mm. a, a from a journalistic standpoint and the from the films that i've done and the stories that i've told and the the, the depths you can go into with those cars and the variety that was in there i think that's um yeah that's probably um my um favorite one i should say i think in terms of favorite drivers i, I it would probably have to be Loeb and yeah. harry joint um um because i sort of yeah <laughs> Okay, uh, I I'm think a huge you know, low fan. So, <laughs> uh, okay, so do you, would you put him? This is a, a bonus question. Would you put him at the, as the greatest of all time? Because I really yes. struggle between him and OGA. Yes. I think it's no, so so difficult. Lowe is Lowe is for me the greatest. Um, okay. So yeah, that's probably a better word. favorite. Ari, because I I think he's so, I've been lucky enough to you know meet him and, and speak to him. He's such a, a lovely, kind, intelligent, um, fascinating person. Um, but yeah, Lowe for me is the best um, of all time. And the 
reasons for me are that I think it's kind of weirdly it's those head to heads between him and OJ. And I think the Loaves winning Monty in the Puma kind of yeah. sealed the deal for me completely okay. because I, I just don't believe that if it had been anybody other than Sebastian Loeb behind Sebastian Ogier, he would have taken the risks, got that puncture, yeah. you know, taken that extra risk at that corner and got that puncture. But I just feel like he he wants to beat Loeb so badly sometimes that he can't. It, it pushes him to a place that he doesn't get to with other people. And and I there's something about the sort of the kind of insouciance of Loeb and the it's, it's almost Corinthian spirit with which he does stuff and this slightly sort of um it, it's it's almost like it doesn't doesn't matter and he can sort of oh if I want oh it's good yeah fine it it that just appeals to me and I, I think it it um yeah he seems to do it with an ease that is quite extraordinary. Yeah I think certainly in his more recent years I think because I think he uh, it, during his sort of peak I think he, he wasn't liked by a lot of people, which is very normal for very successful sportsmen. But more recently, I think there's this kind of relaxed, just kind of comfort in himself and, yeah. you know, the ability is still there, isn't it? The Monte Carlo. And I think yeah. he did a rally in the 306 as well. Oh, he fin he finished, unbel I think, I can't remember if it was Mont Blanc or somewhere, and he finished ridiculously yeah. high against R5 and Rally 2 cars. And I just thought yeah. that is absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, yeah, I love loved watching that footage. It was, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the onboard footage from that was absolutely. And Francois uh, Delacour was in yeah, another yeah. three or six as well. And I think even he, with all his um, wonderful confidence, kind of, sort of was quite shocked at. Yeah, uh, and then started the complaining pace. that his engine was down on power and yeah, and, and yeah. got and got, <laughs> got typically Delacour grumpy, which which but it, it added to the story. It was it was brilliant. Um, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I think I know the answer to this question: uh, tarmac or gravel. Um, okay, I'm intrigued. What, what, because you said that the way you said it, what do you, what, what do you think I'm going to say? I thought you, I would have thought you would say gravel because of the way the car moves. So I thought you would be drawn to it. Yes, I think. And that's the reason the escort is set up for gravel because that's actually sort of, um, I'm, I'm definitely better on tarmac. Um, I think, and that's where I've had the sort of, I, I love some of the, I love driving tarmac rallies and stuff like the Jim Clark because the feeling of going along a public road mm. um, that is obviously close to public traffic because it's the stage, but you know what I mean, or going through a village or something like that, there's, it's such an extraordinary feeling. Um, and uh, that's that kind of, it, I still remember those feelings from doing the Jim Clark the first time. And it all just clicking and making sense and pace notes making sense and it sort of brought everything to me. But yes, the feeling of the feeling of driving on gravel, um, I would it's is just the best for me. So um, yeah, you are you are right. Um, good gravel. Good. So last one then. Uh one stage, one car, what would it be? Um Ooh, well, you can pick one okay. rally, one car if you want to. It's a bit. It depends how yeah, no, okay. uh, encyclopedic your knowledge is of individual stages. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say, um, John, I'm going to because I've been lucky enough to drive a lot of cars. I'll pick a car that I haven't driven, but which I really like this is like all those things this is it's like sort of your three car garage is going to change tomorrow if you ask me tomorrow yeah, yeah. and you've got me thinking so uh i'm going to say um the peugeot 206 wrc because as i've already said i love that kind of early-ish era of wrc car and i haven't driven one and i think it's just a really cool looking car and i'd love to know what that's like to drive um and i'm going to pick up on point because you know, if, if this is my fantasy, then I'm going to be, I'm going to mimic Burns um, in that onboard and um, try and be, uh, 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 go down that stage like that. So, yeah, that's, that's the dream. I could say New Zealand, I was tempted by New Zealand, but I'm going to go for 
um, go for that. Okay, I'm, I'm going to throw in another question because you you inspired me. I'm stealing your question. What is your three car garage? You know, you've driven, <laughs> you've driven so many cars and so many different types of car. I mean, I str- I mean, I think, I think anyone struggles with their three car garage, but. I mean, having yeah. driven like silly stuff like McLaren F1s and, you know, really high end mm. kind of supercars and hypercars mm. and having, you know, an interest in motorsport. Where, where, I mean, how do you pick three? That's that seems impossible. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it kind of kind of is. I suppose um, so I was having to about this the other day. Um, I would. Um, I mean, in, probably say some sort of money and object some sort of alcoholics um okay. rest of mod i think uh because i as a road car because they're just brilliant they're so yeah it's kind of that italian escort uh kind of feel um yeah just a lovely thing like you could drive it an awful lot and have a lot of fun with it uh not ridiculous speeds um i would pick a um I'm going to go for um, a 996 um, Porsche 911 rally car. Nice. Curveball. Didn't expect that one. Because I love the 911. Um, so I'm getting my fix, my 911 fix and my rally car fix all in one. Um, and I think it's very little cooler than a, a 911 rally car. Um, so... Of those two and then something um probably very dull and practical kind of um to have <laughs> every day because actually kind of it's kind of quite useful in in life but part, part um, of me part of me kind of hoped you'd say the clear because <laughs> <laughs> in, in case anyone doesn't know henry has a clear 182 and i love a clear so i just kind <laughs> of hoped that you'd you'd say the clear well, the clear is my real life kind of yeah. <laughs> my, my real life three car garage. So this is this is fantasy. So I'm picking, picking something different. It's kind of um, uh, yeah. What would I pick? I don't know. Um, I'll probably pick. Uh, um, I'll probably pick something. I, I still really like the um, really the the modern defenders because um, they I have good memories of doing the launch of that. Um, but totally sort of kind of as, as base spec as you could get one of those. Um, and because I live out in the countryside as well, it's actually quite useful to be able to do that. And plus that I can tow the rally car around as well, which I'd need to and shove a bunch of spares in the back or a bunch of mountain bikes and stuff. So yeah, we'll go for, um, we'll go for that. as a, a three car garage. How's that? Yeah, that's pretty eclectic. I'll take that. That's pretty <laughs> good. Okay. Well, I think we will wrap it up there. Uh, big thank you to you, Henry, for, joining me uh we've talked a lot so this is definitely going to be over two episodes um <laughs> but i really appreciate it good to get your thoughts on all things rallying and hear a bit more about your passion so thank you for joining me and for everyone watching thank you for tuning in as always like comment subscribe and i will see you again next time